I tried this trick once before. So let's start at the beginning. The silk I will use today is satin. It has one side shiny and the other matte. When I'm interested in an accurate pattern, I draw it in advance. The drawing has to be put under the silk. And since my frame is thick, I usually put either some kind of board or a book underneath, so the drawing becomes more visible through the silk. And I fix the drawing with normal pins. And so on all sides. Again, I use markers. I have several videos on my channel where I talk about the different uses of markers in silk painting, but I haven't done one like this yet. The markers that I will use in the tutorial I will show up close, but I think the brand doesn't matter much, because each marker has to be tasted separately. I purposely took fresh markers that give a pretty wide line. It doesn't really turn out to be a very graceful line, but I would like my idea to work out. In fact, I'm still not sure if I should make this video or if it would be a wasted effort. But either way, failure or success, <laughs> you'll see it since I'm filming it. Once upon a time, many years ago, the idea of using markers instead of resist came up. And you know, in some cases it worked, but it still didn't give a 100% guarantee. And after a few failures, I stopped relying on markers as a resist. I intentionally used different markers of different thickness and of uh, different purposes. Among them are permanent markers and also textile ones. And let's see how they behave. Let's see how they hold the dyes within the required limits. And I changed the color not so much for practical reasons, but more for aesthetical concerns. This blue marker is pretty old, but let me check it out as well. I'm going to make a bolder line, so I draw it a few times each. And these are fresh thin markers. I showed them in a recent video. They have a thinner line, but, but I want to check them all out. And here comes the crucial moment, the moment of truth. Will the markers leak? Will they behave differently? Of course, I try to keep the brush not too wet. It seems to me a very important point in this case, because in my previous experiments it was the plenty of wetness that influenced the markers not to hold the dye. I've talked about how to control brush wetness in more detail in several videos, but the recipe is simple. After rinsing, dry the brush on a paper towel. That was the first point. The second point is to have a palette. Uh, my palette is a white plate. White, so you can see the color clearly. And on a flat surface, the water from the dye evaporates very quickly and it really dries out. I'll draw your attention to that later. Look, so far so good, and my markers are not leaking dyes. These have been permanent markers, and now I'm getting closer to the textile one. And this is where I'm going to paint with a more liquid dye. I'll come back to this spot later to check the result after some time. And how the red thin marker behaves. 
Of course, you can't always see immediately if marker is leaking. You have to wait. By the way, you must have encountered a leaking resist, and you can't always see it right away either. Well, so far it's going really well. I can't believe it. It's amazing. I think there could be three reasons for such a good result. The first is that I try to paint with a pretty dry brush. The second is the quality of the markers themselves. Like I said before, the markers used here were mostly permanent markers and one textile marker. That's the one that was grey. And thought, but I'm not entirely sure about this one. But it's possible that the silk doesn't have good flowability. Usually flowing silk absorbs dye quickly, but you can see for yourself that my silk today is not like that at all. If I had washed it in a warm soapy water, the situation would be different and the dyes would spread very quickly. Generally, it's believed that silk should be washed before painting, but honestly, I never do it. I don't know, but poor fluidity doesn't bother me. Oh, and here's the place where I poured the liquid dye. See, it made streaks on the black color and it never seeped through the marker. This is what the dyes look like on my palette. As you can see, they are quite dried out. Now I'm wondering what will happen to this pretty dried up marker. Really, I've drawn this line a few times. I'll even overlap it with a brush on this side. Then, then we'll see if it shows through. In general, I try not to hit the marker line with the brush, but on the contrary, to leave the brush at some distance from this line, so that as little moisture as possible is near the marker. You see, the thin blue marker didn't drip either. And the red one didn't bleed. And now I'm a little scared to get started on the background, because it's the one that used to bleed over the marker line. However, I would like to see this experiment through to the end. And if it leaks, it leaks. Imagine it worked out well with the background too. I'm happy to see such a result. I'm more than sure you love it too. And thanks to my subscriber for the comment that inspired me to make this video. Really, thank you so much. I don't know how to pronounce your name, but it's written here. Thanks to you, I recalled my experience from a long time ago, which was not as impressive. With that in mind, I can't give you a hundred percent guarantee. But I really hope that if you use a dry enough brush and if you get the right markers, you should be able to do it too. And my next challenge is to try this technique on a well-flowing silk. And so the sequel will follow.